Hello and welcome to another Campus Creations video. Today we'll be going over a project we did in August of 2021 and see what you can learn for your own projects. Enjoy! This family called us to replace their old retaining wall system. As you can see, the old wooden 4x4s were starting to rot and it was becoming unsafe to walk on the stairs. On top of that, the dirt was no longer conducive to growing a garden, and the landscape rock was filthy and no longer decorative. Let's see how we're able to make this area beautiful and usable. First, we start off by tearing apart the old walls. Like most retaining wall fixes that we do, we make sure there's no forecasted heavy rains before we're able to finish the wall. Leaving an inclined drop exposed with nothing to retain the dirt could leave you with a small landslide to clean up were you to get a heavy rain. More about the catastrophic consequences of heavy rain later. These 4x4s are held together with long nails. In order to stack them neatly in our trailer and take them to the waste site, we used a large bolt cutter. This reduced the volume of waste that we had, and because the waste site we used charges by the volume, we got charged less. If you're doing your own project, check to see how your local waste site charges for the waste. This extra time spent neatly stacking things and maximizing volume may or may not be worth it for you. Now we start to dig for the base with the Bobcat E26. Although the old wall left us with a starting point, we still had to get a new level for our base. So we ended up having to dig deeper than where the old wall was placed. The Bobcat E26 mini excavator came in very handy in this project. It was compact enough to fit through all the gates in the yard, as well as light enough to not completely destroy the grass or break any cement. As with any digging, make sure there are no utilities going through the dig area as that can be dangerous if you hit one, and at the very least add time to your project. Always call the utility companies to mark the dig areas, and even more so when using heavy machinery to dig. Per usual, we used Class 5 gravel as a base rock. Class 5 is a mixture of rock, sand, and clay that gives you the ability to compact for use on driveways or as a base foundation in patios and retaining walls. When building retaining walls, you could also use a 3 8 inch minus limestone gravel to make moving and setting blocks a little easier. To compact the gravel, you'll want to use a mechanical compactor, as hand compacting is usually not strong enough to thoroughly compact gravel. We use Wacker Newson brand compactors, and in this case, the vibratory rammer, also known as the jumping jack. 
Any mechanical compacting machine will state an amount it can compact, usually in pound force. As a general rule of thumb, 1000 pound force is equal to one inch of compaction. So, to compact six inches of gravel, you'll need 6,000 pound force of compaction, or two layers of three inches will need 3,000 pound force of compaction in each layer. We needed to build the wall completely vertical on this side of the wall because of the corner of the house seen on the left side of the screen. Since the tail gives one inch of step back for every block you stack, we'd get six inches of separation from the house by the time you got to the top block. You can see that one inch step back in every other part of the wall, but I'll point that out later. To avoid that separation, we had to break the locking tail off the back of the block and glue each piece to achieve a vertical wall look while stacking. Adding drainage is extremely important for the longevity and integrity of a retaining wall. In this instance, because the wall is holding back dirt, a non-draining material, we placed a perforated drain hose along the second level of block as well as a drain grate that will allow the water to escape from behind the wall so it doesn't add too much pressure or retain much moisture. Later in the video, you'll also see how we use a clean rock to aid with the drainage. Here we use some solid block steps. These heavy duty steps are made to be constantly walked on and are easy enough to put down as long as you don't mind the weight of the block. To achieve a rock face on all three visible sides of the two edge steps, we used a cracking machine that exposed these faces. Here you'll be able to see three things I referred to earlier. First, the one inch step back. Because every one of these blocks has a tail that engages with the block below it, each new level of block receives one inch back. For that reason, if you need a vertical wall, you should break the tail off and glue each block to the one below it. Second, the drainage grate. You can see how we cut the grate into two blocks allowing water to escape the back side of the wall. And third, the drainage rock. We use a three quarter inch clear limestone rock that is free from dust and sand. This allows water to flow freely through it and reduces the pressure and moisture that can cause the wall to deteriorate prematurely. Another great and perhaps better compacting gravel is recycled asphalt. 
Taken from old roadways and driveways, this asphalt mixture does a great job at compacting and is usually cheaper than Class 5. You can call your local asphalt and concrete recycling plant to see if they sell this to the public. We want to tell you we appreciate your views, subscriptions, and comments on our last videos. It means a lot to us that you guys enjoy our work as much as we do. I also want to address a question we've been asked a lot. Many people have commented and asked about the price of our projects. We've replied with the same answer to all, but I'd like to expand on it a little right now. We don't publish the cost of projects for several reasons. First, we want to protect the client's finances. What kind of projects they have done at their home and the price it costs is a private matter and they can decide to disclose that if they'd like to. Second, this protects us as we bid for future projects. There are many factors that affect the price of a project. For example, difficulty of terrain, ease of use of machinery, material cost, distance from home base, weather, and many more things go into the final price. So, two projects with the same exact amount of material needed could have different prices if, for example, one site is easily accessible and the other is not. And third, the price of labor and materials can vary widely state by state or even city by city. So it would be unfair for a company in another state to have to compete with a company in a state where, for example, labor may be cheaper or material may be more accessible if you're basing yourself off of that cheaper price. But in order to give you an idea of what a project costs, I will continue to link all the materials we used in each job in the description of each video, but I'll also start including the amount we used of each material. This way you can do the math and find out roughly how much money was spent on materials.
Another machine that helped us a lot on this project is the Bobcat L28 Mini Articulated Loader we bought right before we started this project. The purpose of this machine is to fit into smaller spaces while the machine weighs only 4,200 pounds but can be operated on large turf tires to protect grass and other decorations. The lifting arm also allows you to extend the bucket to reach farther and taller depending on the conditions. We have found that it struggles to climb some inclines, especially with weight in the bucket, and you have to learn how much material it's capable of moving. But all in all, this machine was a back saver for this job, as well as jobs we've done since we bought it. Look for it in future videos to see how we've utilized it in our projects. If you'd like to use it in your project, you can look for it at your nearest machine rental store. It's fairly easy to operate as it uses a regular steering wheel, just one joystick to operate the lifting arm, and a forward and a reverse pedal. Perhaps what takes a little getting used to is how to operate in small spaces, but an hour or so of driving it should be enough to get used to the dimensions. As always, use every safety precaution while operating these machines as they can cause damage, injury, or death to property and life.
we do to make laying down the base block faster and easier is that we break off the tail of the block. That tail I mentioned earlier is used to lock with the block below it and it gives each level of the wall a 1 inch recession. But the tail isn't necessary when it's the first block on the base gravel. When you break off the tail it's easier to move around and you don't have to make any adjustments to how you lay the gravel down to compensate for the side incline the tail would give you. When setting block caps, take note of how your specific block system is designed to be set. Some blocks, like these, are all identical and have a rock face in the front and back with a trapezoid shape. This allows you to simply lay them on the block, straighten them out, and cut as you need with no regard as to what is left, right, top, or bottom. Other systems use A blocks and B blocks in which they alternate to produce a pattern, while some other wall systems have caps with a top and bottom. Caps should be glued to the top block, and most of the time also hang over the top block a couple of inches. But the gluing shouldn't start until every cap is set, straightened, and cut. That way you make sure you have the right amount and none of them dry before you have to make corrections. Here we start work on the small walkway to connect the deck to the steps. As you can see, the dirt is soaking wet while we're digging this out. And here is where I tell you about the catastrophic consequences of a heavy rainfall on an unfinished wall. The night before this footage was taken, a huge storm system moved through the city and dropped a lot of rain. From where we were working, we could see a group of landscapers working on a wall at the same time as us, but they built a new retaining wall in front of the still standing old retaining wall. When they finished the new wall, they tore apart the old wall thinking it would be easier to backfill. But since they didn't finish backfilling in time, the rain caused a huge landslide, knocking over the new wall. The guys spent the next two days picking up the blocks and sorting out the ones that were damaged and the ones that could be used again. This obviously caused an inconvenience to the landscape company and likely damaged the trust the homeowner had in them. So the biggest lesson is to work according to your forecast and what you can finish in a timely manner. this patio and we use the herringbone pattern with the soldier course on the edges. We also put these pavers in the landings between the steps we put down. We measured the dimensions out so there would be as few cuts as possible. In the end, we only had to cut half pavers to fit where they're needed and a small strip of pavers near the concrete patio. And we sealed it with gray polymeric sand and a light sprinkle of water followed with a more thorough spray to help the polymeric sand congeal.
I had forgotten to take a final video immediately after we finished the project, so the video you're seeing is from over a year after we finished. All the plants and decoration were placed there by homeowners. In the end, we used a lot of material, which will all be linked in the description of the video. In all, we used five yards of class five and recycled asphalt, five yards of three quarter inch clear limestone rock, 460 retaining wall blocks, 120 wall caps, 56 steps, 80 square feet of pavers, a full roll of four inch drain tile, three drainage grates and connectors, and four pieces of snap edge edging. The project took my dad and I 12 days to finish, including some half days. I hope you enjoyed watching this project time lapse and that you're able to learn valuable information for your own projects. Feel free to like and subscribe, as well as comment any questions you have about the project or any processes. Thank you and catch you next time.